This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. All right, thank you. And welcome everybody to the May 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Zoning Board of Appeals. And uh, start with just a, a rundown of what our evening will look like. So we all have a sense and I'll um, first thank all of our IT support for helping getting us set up uh, with our virtual meeting this month again. And a reminder, uh, if possible, just to help with minimal or minimizing background noise while you're not speaking, if you would be able to mute your um, mute your settings, that would be great. And then we'll make sure uh, to offer ample time when it is the opportunity to speak to allow you to get off mute and get those comments in. Uh, we have two applications this evening and the way the meeting will be structured, we'll start with our public hearing. We'll uh, go one at a time on the applications, reading the application into the record. We'll then hear a staff report that's been prepared uh, for each application. Then we'll hear testimony from the applicant, uh, the, the folks who are applying for the variance. There'll be opportunity there for uh, questions from the commissioners and opportunity for you know, the applicant to offer any additional information that is desired. And we'll also, as we conclude the public hearing on each of the applications, there will be opportunity for anyone who has joined who wishes to speak either in favor of or against the application for the variance. Um, at the point we've concluded the public hearing for both applications, we'll make a motion and we'll move into our public meeting. And that's just an important break point to keep in mind because once we've closed the public hearing and we move into the public meeting, there's actually no further testimony at that point. It's just the commissioners discussing and eventually coming to vote um, on the application. And so, as I said, once we move into the public meeting, it'll be discussion amongst the commissioners. Uh, we do have, and potentially some questions for the zoning enforcement offer, officer for clarification. We do have six commissioners on tonight, so um, we will need to decide, um, Rita and Paul, if you have a preference on which of the two applications you'd wish to vote on, we can decide that as we get closer. Um, but we'll have five voting members for each application. Four affirmative votes are required for the variance to be approved. So if it's three to two in favor, the variance actually is not approved at that point. You need four affirmative votes, so either four to one or five to nothing. And um, at the point we've concluded the public meeting and the vote on the applications, we do have additional items on the agenda, uh, but obviously you know, you're welcome at that point. If you've only joined us for a specific purpose, you're welcome to uh, drop. But the rest of our agenda quickly will consist of approving the minutes from our last meeting. There will be an opportunity then for uh, public comment on any Zoning Board of Appeals matters that otherwise weren't covered during the course of the evening. Uh, we are hoping to finalize our and formalize our officers for the remainder of the year and then we will adjourn. So uh, with that, again, thank you for joining. Thank you for your patience as we uh, get through this in a, in a virtual setting. And we will begin, if I could have a volunteer among the commissioners to read the first application into the record. And I can do it if that would be better. Um, I'll take the first one and if somebody wants to jump in for the second one. So the first application is application number 6231-20, variance from section 5.2 permitted principal uses to allow business use in the residential district, i.e. former accessory business use, private arts academy, to be permitted as a principal use arising out of proposed subdivision of lot known as 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue, which houses the academy in the accessory structure known as 431 Hartford Avenue, as shown on assessor's map submitted. Residential zone B, location 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue, applicant Douglas R. Buck. And Charles, if you wanna start us with the reading of your report, and then we'll move to uh, testimony from the applicant. Okay, Mr. Chairman. So um, 
just to give you a little background um, to this uh, application here, uh, the subject property uh, known as uh, 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue. And this is the number that, that's given to the property by the assessor. So if you look at the assessor's map, you will see 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue. Um, and this, this property as a whole currently contains a residential building in the southeast corner, which is the principal structure on the lot. And, and this structure for mailing purposes, this building rather for mailing purposes is known as 411 Hartford Avenue. Uh, building number 431 to the north west of the property is um, an accessory structure uh, which currently houses the Weathersfield Arts Academy. So building number 431 formerly housed a storage rental business, which was legally conforming up until 2005. Uh, December 2005, the, the owners sought and obtained a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals to change from one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use of a lesser intensity, namely the Weathersfield Arts Academy. So today, 431 Hartford Avenue is a legal non-conforming business use in a residential zone, in a, in a residential zone as an accessory structure. So um, and I'm going to read the exact variance that was granted, and the variance was granted to change the use of accessory buildings from non-conforming storage rental to a business use, private arts academy at 411 Hartford Avenue, West Side B, residence zone. And um, you'll know that the property is oftentimes referred to as just 411. And that's, that's how it is with most properties that has a, a double um, numbered address. They're usually referred to by the 41. So 411 Hartford Avenue is synonymous with 411-431 Hartford Avenue today. So um, no, the stipulations that was granted for that variance, uh, the stipulations included as follows, and there are three stipulations. Number one, intended use as arts academy only. So the, the, the um, building can only be used for arts academy. And uh, number two, all parking will be on property at 411 Hartford Avenue. No offsite parking permitted. And again, when they say 411, they were really specifically speaking to that parking lot that was designed around um, the southern section of the building that was to host the, um, the Arts Academy. So parking will be on property 411 Alfred Avenue, no offsite parking permitted. Uh, and the West Barn was not to be used for performing arts studio. It is the intention of the applicant to resubdivide the property and transfer 431 to another entity. And I say resubdivide um, because I, I learned that the section of this property, which is now known as 30 Jordan Lane, was a part and parcel. It was one complete parcel. And then um, that was subdivided to become 430 uh, Jordan Lane, which is currently uh, office use. So that property is zoned for office. So it seems to me that the entire property was residential until that split was made and, and there was some kind of a zone change. That's just my um, estimation of this. Uh, Mr. Buck later on can probably um, corroborate that or, or deny that as the case may be. So it is the intention of the applicant, as I say, to resubdivide the property and transfer 431 to another entity. Um, I learned that a section of this property was previously cut off. This would mean that 431, 431 would now be deemed 
a principal structure. So if after today um, a variance was granted, then there was would be a resubdivision. So you'd have two parcels now. You would have 411 and 431. So, so both structures would be, um, both buildings, I should say, would be um, principal buildings on two separate lots. Mm -hmm. So, the, and it's, it's my belief that the assessor would now um, maintain that 411 building as 411 and this new lot, so to speak, would become 431 Hartford Avenue for the assessor's records. The variance is necessary before going to the Planning and Zoning Commission for this lot split. So um, the, the applicants could not have gone and get a lot split unless they get the variance for this, um, this principal structure on, on the residential property. So um, the applicant consulted with staff um, and expressed their intention to split the lot into two and to transfer 431 to a separate entity. Staff advised that in so doing, the Arts Academy would then become a principal structure, as I um, noted before, and, um, and would lose the legal non-conforming status as a non-conforming use in a residential accessory building to becoming a non-conforming principal use, which would be legal. So, and, and this means that the applicant would have to seek and obtain the variance before any lot split can be considered. Therefore, the ZBA will be viewing this variance application for approval subject to the lot split. So if the variance is not granted, then there cannot be a lot split because it would create an illegal land use. So in, in summary, uh, the applicant is seeking to secure a variance before proceeding to the Planning and Zoning Commission. If the board was to consider granting a variance tonight, it would have to state on the record that this variance would be contingent upon the lot split being approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. The applicant surveyor advised staff that the proposed lot split would make both parcels in conformity with the bulk requirements of the zone. So for instance, the side setbacks, side yard setbacks, uh, rear front yard setbacks would be in conformity with the requirements for uh, a residential zone. I was contacted by a resident a couple of weeks ago who questioned whether this new business use, if, if approved, um, would allow any other business such as a retail sales to move into the building sometime in the future and conduct business. My response was that business use in this context refers to the school as being, uh, school as being a business entity in itself, but not the school as a business source to, to, to sell things retail or conduct any other business apart from. And then again, the stipulation from the variance said that it should be used solely for the Arts Academy. Um, so any, any kind, in my estimation, any kind of sales from this uh, building, from this Arts Academy would be uh, something relating to like materials for the school, for the students, uh, use as a part of the, the school, um, as opposed to everyday sale to the general public. So um, I quoted the number one condition of the 2005 ZBA approval, which stipulates intended use as Arts Academy only. I stated further that if the Academy was to move out of the lot, it would be zoned residential it would still be zoned residential. And if any other use, whether business or any other type of use wishes to, to um, come into that, that building, uh, the property would have to, they would have to seek a zone change. 
from the Planning and Zoning Commission are applied to this board for a, for a, a use variance. In other words, any contemplated change of use of this property would require an approval from the relevant board. And this is um, duly submitted by myself and um, that's, that's my uh, report for staff regarding the um, application for the variance for 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Charles. If we could have the applicants uh, unmute and uh, if you would, if uh, whoever is going to speak would just uh, start by stating your name and address for the record and tell us more about uh, what you'd like us to know about the application and then we'll have an opportunity for some questions from commissioners as well. So who do we have speaking on behalf? Uh, I, will, I will start. My name is Douglas Buck, 411 Hartford Avenue. and I'm here with my wife, Virginia. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, good evening, sir. Okay. And basically, um, we have, well, Charles gave a very good summary of every, everything. So basically, we are planning to donate that parcel to Weathersfield Academy to the Arts. So they can receive funding and donations and uh, and, and grants to be able to fix it up a little better and improve the parking area. We ran out of money. We couldn't finish putting all the shrubbery in and finishing the parking area. So it looks really nice for the community. So that's uh, one of the reasons. And also it would give the opportunity, the academy an opportunity to, to, to remain and hire uh, better teachers and maybe reduce the cost of tuition a little bit for the students. So we think it would be a great asset, improved asset for the community to do that. And as you know, the uh, variance was already given. So if we don't have permission to uh, tonight and to divide the lot, we'll just keep it the way it is with the present variance. Um, but we think uh, both for us and for the academy, it would be very beneficial and for the community to uh, donate that parcel to them. So that's basically why we're seeking this variance. Also, okay. as you know, uh, uh, B resident zones are zoned for schools, but you have all these regulations that say an art school is not a school. <laughs> Doesn't qualify under your regulation. So I don't know. Anyway, it's a, it's a school and uh, we, we, we hope the school and we, we believe the school is one of the finest in the country, one of the finest in New England. It's uh, conservative. It's uh, uh, classical. classical realism is what they teach, careful art, um, learning and drawing and portraiture. It's not your usual run of the mill art school where you throw things on the wall and see, if, see where it sticks. My wife's had a vision. She's right here. She can explain a little more to you <laughs> about it. Anyway, uh, we believe it'd be a great asset to the community and enable the academy to proceed and to expand a little bit. Um, if I may say so, I'm, I'm Virginia Buck. I'm the other <laughs> half of this group here. She's the better half. And um, there are only two really good classical realism schools, which are is an art system based on the early, early Rembrandts and Da Vinci type uh, art school training. One is in, uh, in New York, uh, near New Long Island, called the Grand Central Academy. And the other one is the Realist School in Boston. And we are right smack, fortunately, in the middle. So people don't have to travel two hours to get there. We can, we can provide this very excellent, basic classical training for children all the way up to my age, <laughs> which is considerable. Uh, and. Um, I have enjoyed, uh, when it opened uh, some I, 10, 4, 12 years ago, a tremendous education in how to draw and paint and to have even won awards from my studies at this academy. It is wonderful. And um, 
our students do very well in shows and so do the adults who attend the classes and we have the best instructors from all over the country and uh, we believe it'd be a great asset to the academy if we they could get grants so that and we wanted to do this in the beginning way back when we first opened it but um, the, a piece of property that my mother had um, on, on our land was tied up with her estate. And so we could only divide the property by one parcel and that parcel was already um, allocated. So now that she had passed away, the, the, the property reverts to us. So we can now uh, take advantage of this nonprofit status for the, the academy. And we really are very excited to, um, to see this come to fruition. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, now we will open it up to questions from the commissioners. And, and I have just a, a couple. Um, just so the, the the desire is to split the parcel, so then the academy itself would become the owner of four thirty one. Correct. Okay, and that, as you said, would be beneficial for them from securing funds and and other areas. Are they? Do they effectively pay you rent now for the use of the property or how, what's the current arrangement? Yes, they pay us rent. Okay. Correct. They also take care of all the utilities and insurance. Okay. All right. Well, let me, um, you answered the other ones that I had. So let me open it up. Um, we can kind of go around the horn. Any of the other commissioners want to weigh in? Looks like Dan's uh, going to unmute. Yes, uh, just a quick question regarding parking. Does this impact parking any which way when you subdivide the lot? It's the same. It'll remain the and same? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have to have, to have to complete complete the parking lot. Only half of it's paved right now. Okay. It ran, yeah, out, of, it ran out of money. So. I think he's looking at in terms of space, aren't you? Oh, in terms of space. In yeah. terms of where you divide the lot. Right. It, no, right. it, it stays the same. Everything stays the same. Okay. Thank you. You're All right. Um, and I can see uh, the other four of you. So I'll just, uh, if you want to give me a quick nod, if you want to weigh in with any questions. I got a, I got a question. Like everybody. For, more, so Kevin, for, uh, more so for Charles. If, um, does the current parking meet the, the new use potentially already? An amount of spots? The parking, to the best of my recollection, had met the parking requirements from, yes, from the beginning. So yeah, th there's no issue with parking. Okay. All right, looks like everybody else is set. Um, I do have one question and Charles, I'll start with you and then we can get the applicants to weigh in. Looking at the, um, and I've got a, a poor printout of the diagram right now, but uh, there's a structure seemingly right in the middle of where the two properties would be subdivided. Do we have any concerns or is there any concern we need to have around whether that's got enough clearance from where the new property line would be? It's a chicken house. Aha, okay, thank you, that probably <laughs> clears it up. We don't have too many <laughs> concerns, but, but the biddies might have some. <laughs> and there's a, there's a fence there that, that separates. <laughs> okay. And actually, that's, that leads me to a question. So there is, um, where you're proposing to split the lot, you've already got fencing there that essentially the separates right the school from... It's always stay where it is. Okay. So from that perspective, um, the old, physically in terms of how the combined property is used today, um, Mr. and Mrs. Buck, you're saying that the use would stay the same. It just is a split of the property and transferring the ownership of 431 to the school itself. Exactly. Okay. And um, was, I know we had the variance that was uh, read from 2005. Was that the, is that the start of the academy itself or does it precede that 2005 date? It precedes the academy. We had to get the variance before we had the academy. Oh, I got you. Okay. 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 Um, any other questions from the commissioners? 
All right, um, Mr. and Mrs. Buck, anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's it. All right, thank you. Um, at this point, we will open it up. Do we have anybody on the line who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Charles, are you aware of anyone that we have? Okay, yes, this one? so um, that's Mr. Mark Wazilewski, and um, he had sent me an email earlier today, which I will read into the records. And uh, he was in he is in support of the variance. And um, he, he writes as follows. I write in strong support of application number 6231-20, which seeks a use variance for 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue related to a subdivision of the property. I am both a close neighbor of the box at 408 Hartford Avenue and the board chairman for the Wethersfield Academy of the Arts located at 431 Hartford Avenue. Doug Buck has indicated to me that it is his intention to subdivide the property and give the barns to the Wethersfield Academy of the Arts located at 431 Hartford Avenue. The barns at 431 Hartford Avenue are historic in nature. The academy which is located in a portion of the barns is a non-profit arts academy that provides art instruction and other services that benefit our community. By passing the barns onto the academy, the box are positioned in the academy to thrive for years to become the box barns to be preserved and restored and said thank you mark e wasilowski wasilowski okay thank you charles do you know do we have anybody on the line who had in indicated speaking on or in favor of the application we have a couple of telephones here um I All right. can't identify them by name, but if you're listening, you can unmute yourselves and... Um... All right, and then we'll offer... Is there anybody who wishes to speak on this application at all? We'll just keep it simple that way. And then if uh, you want to tell us whether you're supporting approval of the variance or you're against the approval of the variance. I do, I, I do Mr. Chairman, I do have four other letters in opposition, in, in opposition to the variance. In opposition? Yes. Okay. All right, so let's make one last uh, pass. Right. Anybody on the line wishes to speak I would in like support to speak. of it? Can you hear me? I would like to speak, Charles Stewart. <clears throat> okay. Okay, could Mr. you, Stewart, can you give us your, Pardon me? Yeah, just give us your name and, just give us your name and address, okay. Char please. For the Char moment. Charles Stewart, 416 Hartford Avenue, I, do, uh, I live directly across the street from the Buck property. I'm here with my wife, <clears throat> and uh, I, <clears throat> I uh, would like to make some general comments and then some specific comments. Um, I would like to tell you that it is my belief that the majority of the residents on the street that I've spoken to are in favor of um, the academy, and uh, they are also very concerned about the preservation of the barns on the property. Uh, <clears throat> my general comment is that we should be more concerned about this property uh, simply because it is as historic a property as you could find anywhere in this country. It goes back to 1730, uh, it, perhaps even before. It's a gorgeous property, and part of that attractiveness are two very large barns that are adjacent, uh, somewhat connected to the art academy. Uh, and so I think that this, this uh, situation is more complicated than it appears. Here because I think uh, that it is in Weathersfield interest. I think it's in the Weathersfield uh, Historic Society interest. 
I think it is in old Wethersfield interest, and I think it's in the neighborhood interest, as well as the Bucks interest, uh, to preserve this property and to improve it and to, in fact, promulgate it. Uh, however, the barns are in significant and uh, it is going to cost significant money, in my opinion, uh, to bring them to the level that they need to be brought to. And I'm not certain that the academy is going to be capable of doing that initially. I, I think it needs, uh, you know, an infusion of effort uh, and maybe cash uh, that doesn't exist right now. I've looked at some of the uh, recent tax records of the academy, and it looks to me from looking at those records that they are just barely breaking even. Uh, the particular record I'm looking at right now is their uh, uh, their revenue for 2018 came to a total of $123,000 and their expenditures came to a total of $121,000. So to, to understand how complicated this is, I, I don't know the answers to any of this, but I know that the Bucks wish to transfer the property to the Academy one of the things that occurred to me was that when the academy was constructed, which was since I've been here, which was approximately uh, 2005, uh, the academy was built. It's virtually a, a, a new section of the building. The barns are in quite bad disrepair, but the academy is like a brand new building. And I don't know if there's money owed on that, and I don't know if... Uh, that's something that the academy would have to assume if the building were transferred to them and so forth, would they be able to do that? Um, in, in any case, um, the, I, I think there are quite a few questions that need to be addressed. And uh, I do think that everyone is supportive, uh, but it's risky, I think, to jump into approving stuff if, if we don't really know what that totally entails. And I, I find it difficult to uh, understand where they're gonna get the money. I know that they, they're receiving money now in terms of grant monies. Uh, I would think they'd have to receive a great deal more grant money. I'm not certain that just moving the property to the school will do that, uh, but I do think um, that it's probably a, a good move. Um, as, long, as long as that the residential nature, which is single family residential nature of the immediate area is maintained. I think that's very important. I also thought that uh, there, there's another uh, idea that uh, I was thinking about was that I think that the, the Bucks uh, themselves have a very long history in Wethersfield and uh, it would be a very good opportunity to uh, explore that from a historical perspective and to uh, perhaps create some sort of a museum which could work in the property, maybe in the barns in conjunction with the Historic Society Museum. All of which is very complicated and very, you know, uh, expansive. So those are my thoughts. All right. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Um, Mr. Buck, if I could direct the question back to you, just um, related to the expenses that we heard about from Mr. Stewart. Are, um, are you able to share with us what the, uh, I know you said the Academy pays rent today, roughly what percentage of those overall annual expenses go toward that? Well, it's their largest expense, and basically it goes for their portion of taxes, for insurance that we have to pay, and for repairs. We don't make any money off of it. Um, I want to say okay, some words about what uh, Charles Stewart said. He's very astute. His analysis is very, very carefully thought out and very accurate. And uh, this property was given to our family in 1739 by my great 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 grandfather Josiah Buck. And we've been wanting, we've been seeking of some way to improve it 
but we cannot get grants because grants only go to a 501c3 organization, most of the grants. And that's one of the reasons why we want to donate it to the academy. Um, they will be able to get the grant money, not only for the school, but also to improve the, uh, the barns. The special barn for conservation. Okay, thank you. Um, Charles, should we come back to you? I believe you said you had other um, feedback from the community. Okay, yes. So um, we, had a, we have a few um, residents speaking against the variance and um, the next letter. If I may something, I'm one of the residents uh, who sent in a letter. My name is Anya Skihan. I live at uh, 424 Hartford Ave. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we have you. Thank you. Yes. yes. So I live uh, directly across uh, from from the property as well, and I I appreciate you uh, you know answering a couple questions we had because it was not evident to us that the uh, property at 431, the Arts Academy, is actually going to be gifted to the Arts Academy itself. Uh, we did not know that. And our concerns, and that's why I wrote a letter actually, uh, was that we were worried that it goes to a third party and would then be used for a business use other than the Arts Academy. Um, I address or the uh, zoning uh, board of com uh, addressed a couple of questions we had, but I think um, a couple other questions need to still be addressed, and that would be that if a variance is going to be granted, we should uh, very carefully craft what the um, use of the property is that it actually is only for the arts academy. Uh, what the parking situation is and um, how we can further protect the historic character of the barns. I think one of the barns is not in use right now. Um, that's part of the 2005 variance. And uh, I would like to find out if there is, if there are plans to use it in the future or if we stay with the same variant, how shall I say, with the same variant variance requirements from 2005. All right, thank you for your comments. Um, Mr. Bach, if I could go come back to you, um, or Charles, if you have this, I'm just curious on that exclusion for the West Barn uh, from the 2005 variance. Do we have insight as to why that was stipulated? I really don't know. I don't know if Mr. Buck could shed any light on that. I don't know why the West Barn was um, omitted. There are two barns. And if you could just tell us which one of these barns are being referred to as the West Barn. Is she asking me? Yes, because I, I um, in my in, in my opinion, it's the biggest barn towards uh, Jordan Lane. Towards Jordan Lane. Okay. Yeah. So, so Mr. Buck, if, or Ms. Buck, if you could give us just um, as we look at the 431 plot from Jordan Lane, the immediate structure is the newer structure that was built for the Art Academy. No. It's and then uh, restored. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and then there are two barns as we go further back on that piece of the property. Is that correct? Well, there's a, there's a shop and a garage, but they're in 411 Hartford Avenue. No, on the property. And, and it's okay. We don't have that background. I was just looking um, because we had some reference to the stipulations from the previous variants. He's talking about the Academy property and the two barns that are left to be done. Yes. The two there, there's the, uh, we restored the auction. the area where the academy now is housed, which is the former ox shed. A former ox shed and carriage house, and the dimensions are exactly the same as before. 
the bays are the same size that they used to be before, and the uh, all the dimensions are the same. Um, just the same wood and the, the other, the, the middle barn, the bit large barn in the center, we wanted to restore, but we, we cannot do that right now. We don't have the funds for it. And then the other barn to the west also needs to be restored. The large barn. The large barn. Yeah. Well, so, so to follow up, Mr. Chairman, it seems to me, it seems to me that the board wanted just um, that building in 431 to be used as the academy and none of these other barns below should be used as the academy. That's, that's all I would interpret. Okay, thank you. Um, and Charles, you had other, I believe other feedback you wanted to share? So yes, so that was um, Miss Ms. Anjas Kehan spoke about her, um, her opposition to, to, to the uh, variance. Then we have another one coming in from Mark and Lisa yeah. the Matia. And um, they say as follows, um, their zoning board of appeals. We are the homeowners of 456 Hartford Avenue, located di diagonally across the street from 431 Hartford Avenue, and have enjoyed living in this closely knit residential neighborhood since 2003. We received a neighbor notification through the mail regarding the proposed application and also received a copy of the actual application from one of our neighbors who had requested it from the town. Our concern with this application is that the owner is requesting a change of use mm. from non-conforming accessory business use on a residential zone property to a non-conforming primary business use on a residential zone property. This current requested variance application can lead to other quote-unquote unknown businesses, business uses in the large vacant portion of the barn complex located at 431 Hartford Avenue beyond the current private arts academy. Our fear is that in the future, the owner of the new subdivided property of 431 Hartford Avenue could go before the zoning board and request a zoning change to business use or mixed use business and argue the history of use for this property was approved twice prior by ZBA for a business use. Also, the proposed subdivision, subdivided property is adjacent to the current office building on 30 Jordan Lane, what would stop the 30 Jordan Lane property owner in the future from purchasing 431 Hartford Avenue and applied to, uh, to expand the property and rezone to business? We are requesting that the ZBA deny the request to subdivide the residential property and uphold the existing stipulations granted in 2005 that was put on the property for the private use of the Arts Academy in the barn complex. Number one, may only be used for the intended use of Arts Academy. Number two, with powers at the discretion of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Number three, all, all parking will be on property, no off-site parking. And four, approved with the exception of the West Barn being used as a performing arts academy. And this is from Mark and Lisa Demetia, Demetia, I'm sorry, 456 Hartford Avenue. Okay, thank you, Charles. Do you have others? We have another one here from uh, Doris, Lecler Doris Leclerc and Rachel Leclerc. 434 Hartford Avenue, and they say that this letter is written in response to application number 6231-20, 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue. We are concerned about this application as it uses the word business in it several times. It appears to imply that this property could someday be zoned for business use. We are most interested in preserving the property 
and the barns that exist on the property. This is a significant piece of Wethersfield history and we are in favor of anything outside of a business zone for this purpose. Living across the street from this property for over 33 years has been has seen it evolve. It has housed horses, a large skateboard ramp, and the barns that were used as a distribution <laughs> center, quote unquote, of some sort. As large truck to trailer trucks would make late night or early morning deliveries on a regular basis. We have seen buildings taken down and then put back up again. When permission for the Arts Academy was granted, we were told that the property was zoned for a school use. That was the intent of the Arts Academy, to be a school, not a business. We have seen plans that included extending the existing parking lot to the Everstores lot north of the property. We have seen a site map that showed 100 parking spaces on the existing property. Other plans that had living quarters within the school building. These plans would not be in keeping with the residential intent of this area of Hartford Avenue. We are requesting that the property not be divided into two parcels as that would provide the area homeowners an uncertainty to the future use of the barns. It needs to remain attached to the primary residence. Doris Leclerc and Rachel Leclerc. Charles, this is Doris and Rachel. We're both on the line. <coughs> and I had a couple more questions after hearing um, the comments from the previous uh, participants. Um, so again, we are certainly um, in favor of preserving the history that's across the street. Um, I am very confused as to when all of a sudden the school is now a business. Um, we were told it was going to be a school. We thought that would open up lots of funding opportunities, so I guess I have a lot to learn about why schools can't be funded and grants get applied. And um, I was an educator for 40 years, so I knew how to get some of that money. Um, my other question is, how do we know it will stay the same? We, what guarantee do we have that the Arts Academy will remain there? If they're unable to secure the funding on their own, now that they're going to be divided, why wouldn't they, they might have to move elsewhere if they could not get the funding to do what they want with the barn. So we don't have a guarantee that it's going to stay the same as was stated. Um, I hear the school is nonprofit. Again, I don't know why, and I guess I need more clarity. Why do we need um, a zone variance, and why do we need to split the property exactly if right. they're nonprofit? What would open up for them to get more funding? And um, again, we've been probably the longest living residents across the street. We've seen that property evolve. We've been told lots of things, and then all of a sudden it isn't what we were told. It's become something different. And we're just very concerned that the street uh, that we live on that's very residential is going to change into something different. And I would hope I'd hear some guarantees that it would never happen, but I don't think anyone tonight can answer that. Thank you. OK. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, in answer to the speaker's question, um, if the academy was to move out of that property, then of course, what would happen? The property would still remain residential. The property is residential today. And the property would remain residential unless a zone change is sought and obtained from the Planning and Zoning Commission. So no, no entity can go and, and take over and, and open a supermarket or anything on this property unless they go through the proper channel and um, have, have that, that approved by, by that um, board. So uh, that's the situation with that. It's residential and it will be residential until changed. Charles, can we say a word or two? Sure. Um, first of all, 
um, Doris McClurk, she's a wonderful neighbor. And she needs to be on the board of directors <laughs> for Weathersfield Academy for the Arts. I think she'd be a wonderful asset. But I wanted to read you uh, this statement from the Certificate of Incorporation for this nonprofit school regarding its dissolution. It says, if Weathersfield Academy for the Arts is dissolved for any reason, Assets remaining after discharging all liabilities and necessary fees will be donated to one or more institutions for the arts in the greater Hartford area. So it would not go to what you would call a commercial use. It would stay as a school, as an arts academy, no matter what. And we have an incredible interest in preserving the barns. We, we, we want to see them. We just don't have the resources to do it. And the grants are unavailable unless we are a 501c3 corporation. Mr. Buck, to that question, so the, the school as it exists today is not yet a 501c3? It is. Oh, it is, okay. Yes. And that status would be maintained even after this split if it, if it were to happen? Okay. If I could just ask if, if you're not speaking, if you could mute just so we minimize background noise. Um, Charles, I want to go back to you. Did you have any additional feedback from the community? Okay. Uh, we have um, one more letter um this one is from 450 hartford avenue um in response to application number 6231-20 for 11 to 431 hartford avenue their zone and board of appeals we have owned our home at 450 hartford avenue which is located north of and diagonally of east across the street from 411 to 431 hartford avenue for over 31 years, enjoying the close knit residential neighborhood and the desire to keep a residential neighborhood. We are writing this letter in response to receiving a neighbor notification through the mail regarding the proposed application 6231 20, 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue, and information we have learned of the actual application. A proposed subdivision of the property and the owner requested zone change of use from non-conforming accessory business on residential zone property to non-conforming primary use business on residential zone property. We are concerned with this application's use of the word business several times, which to us implies that this application could become a stepping stone for the residential property to be applied to be zoned business use are mixed use in the future. We ask that the Zoning Board of Appeals deny the request to subdivide the residential property and uphold the existing stipulations granted in 2005 on the property for the private use of the Arts Academy and the barn complex, which was, uh, which was that it may only be for the intended use of an Arts Academy with ours at the discretion of the Planning and Zoning Commission that all parking will be on the property with no off-site parking and approved with the exception of the West Barn being used as a performing arts academy. And this seemed to be one that I read earlier on. Um, and this one, again, is from Bruce and Mary Ann Perron, 450 Hartford Avenue. It, okay. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right. Um, the comments. Yeah, it was the same as the other one. All right. And did we have anybody else who's on the line who wanted to speak to this application during the hearing? Anyone who wanted to speak on the application for 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue that has not had a chance to speak? Uh, yes, I do. All um, right. Would you give us your name and address, please? Yes. Betty Standish, 278 Hartford Avenue. I'm the program director at the Academy. And um, I wanna thank the Bucks for this incredible opportunity um, 
to be gifted this part of their legacy. And um, I just want everybody to know that the Academy is a business. I mean, we uh, take in money and we pay out instructors. Uh, We bring in an incredible amount of money into the town. Um, We have people staying locally. Half of our students come from out of state. So they are the workshops. So they stay in local places. They eat locally. Um, So we are bringing in money into the town. It's, you know, it's it's a positive. It's an economic positive. Um, I also want to say that as a nonprofit, we could Nonprofit, we could not go out for any renovation monies for the barns unless we own the property. The Historic Preservation Trust, all the foundations do not grant you anything until you own the property, that you would take possession of the property. And so, therefore, we were stuck between a rock and a hard place. The Bucks could not renovate. Um, we couldn't do anything. Yes, we are a small operation. But I have to say that most of our money comes from classes and workshops, so we're earning it. And we're earning it through um, wise choices of instructors, through keen public relations. Um, We have established um, social media presence. And it's a lot of hard work, but we are bringing notice to this town. And um, I think it's something that the town should be proud of. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there other, any other comments from anybody uh, who's on the line? If I may uh, speak again, this is Charles Stewart. Um, having heard everyone's comments and uh, particularly uh, being aware that uh, a zoning change would be required to change it from residential, um, it seems to me that um, anything of significance has been addressed um, and any, I know it still requires a great deal of effort and work on everybody's part, including uh, the neighborhood. And uh, I think people will probably be willing to do that. So, so in any case, uh, I, I think that it's, uh, my, my opinion is very positive. Thank All right, you. thank you. Yeah, um, Mr. and Mrs. Buck, I have uh, one additional question for you, if I may. In the time that the school at the academy has operated on the property, have you had any complaints or objections from neighbors in the immediate area? You, Jenny? I have not. I haven't heard any. I have not okay. personally it, heard any complaints. All right, thank you. And Charles, can I pose Hello? that same question to you? Are you Hello? aware of their... I'm sorry. So... Hi. Yes, Mr. Hello? Chairman. To the best right, of Charles, my... we have somebody who's, uh, is there somebody who's wanting to speak on this application? Hello, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you, I'm sorry, can you give your name and address, please, sir? Yes, yes. my name is Mark DiMattia. We had, we had submitted a letter uh, this morning uh, about the property. And now that we hear the conversations, we, we sort of un- understand better what he's trying to do. But, but, but the conflict, conflict I have right now is that back in 2005, the reason why they gave him the exception of not using the West Barn was because he doesn't have enough on-site parking for an assembly space. And currently he has two very large barns with not enough parking for those barns. So out of the four barns he has there, two have been renovated, which has the requirement for parking, and the two that have not been renovated won't have the required on-site parking if he goes to an assembly use. And if, you're, if the variance is no off-site parking, what's the point of renovating two barns for an academy when they can't park, there's nowhere to park? So by dividing the property, you sort of get half a, half a use of a there's barn. All the things going on at the same time. So how does, how does that work? How do, you, how do you divide the property, let them renovate the barns, but then don't let them park off-site because they don't have enough parking to begin with. And, and I guess that's what was the reason back in 2005, the ZBA uh, gave them the exception of, to not renovate the large barns. So they could at least start the process of the two smaller barns, which they did. So, I mean, I, I'm in favor of 
the Art Academy staying great neighbors. I'm just concerned down the road if something happens and all of a sudden they decide to leave. We got a parcel that's residential with four structures on it that isn't residential. Somebody's going to say, gee, what do we do? We want to do something with this property and it, and it goes south. So that, that's really my, my concern. Again, Mark D. Mattia, 456 Harford Avenue. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Charles, can I come back to you with the, the question that I had? Um, are you aware from the town perspective, have there been any um, complaints about the school since it's been in operation? No, Mr. Chairman, I have not had, um, I've been with the town for a little over two years now. I've not had um, any kind of complaint regarding the school. Um, so no, the answer is no, I've never had any complaint. Okay. Um, all right, I'd like to, uh, I know we've had extended conversation and, and appreciate everybody's input and um, feedback. I'd like to come back, Mr. and Mrs. Buck, to you to um, just close that out to see if there's any additional comment you wish to make. I, 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 hang on one second. Mark, Mark, Mark has raised his hand uh, multiple times. I just want to- Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have good uh, view of everybody. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Charles uh, read off a letter from me at the beginning of this. Uh, I am the chairman of uh, the Wellesfield Academy for the Arts. I'm also uh, direct neighbors with Doug Buck across the street. In fact, I live in the Josiah Buck house. And since I moved in, I've been um, uh, very aware of the role that the Bucks have had in uh, old Wellesfield. Um, and uh, uh, they've been here for eight generations. I think this is a tremendous gift. To, to clear up a little bit about what the academy would be, what kind of changes would take place if this very were um, granted, I can tell you that there wouldn't be very much changes at all. In fact, you know, we're, we're quiet, but we're vibrant. Um, we're good neighbors. And in general, um, on the day-to-day, -day, you wouldn't see any issues. But as Betty and a few other people have, have mentioned, what owning the property would enable us to do would be to renovate the barns and not necessarily for a, a mass meeting hall or, or a space that would allow for hundreds of people. What would allow us to do is actually preserve and restore what are, I mean, unquestionably one of the, you know, uh, cornerstones of historic buildings in Old Weathersfield. And, it's, and in particular, this part of Old Weathersfield, which, which borders Hartford here on the north side, um, it really is a staple. And I think that there, there's no way to actually preserve um, uh, these barns than through this gift. Um, on top of that, you do have the academy, uh, which is um, doing very well, even though uh, this COVID has really kind of thrown a wrench into what would have been a really robust year of um, uh, classes. We do some online classes now still, we're still bringing in income, but we had an art competition along with a large event planned for September that we had to scrap essentially, but we actually do pretty well. And kind of the reason why we take money in and give it out is because we're constantly spending money on bringing in high class um, uh, instructors. And so we, we remain very true to what the Academy's purpose is. Um, it's not flashy. It's not uh, something that, um, is going to um, make uh, huge amounts of money, but you know we're, we're sort of the quiet corner here. We just offer really good instruction and, uh, and uh, want to be good neighbors. So anyway, <coughs> I'm also willing to answer any kind of questions you have of me. I've been uh, the chairman now for four or five months. Um, I've only been on the board for about a year, but if any of the neighbors want to ask me some questions, uh, more than happy to. I, I will just say that this gift, this very generous gift by the bus, um, will place the academy in a position to not only continue on with our mission, but also to help restore those barns. So, thank you. So, I, I do have, I'll ask you one uh, question if I may, just because it came up from some of the other comments. The, the um, vision that the academy would have for the barns is renovation not conversion into additional studio space or can you speak to that? I, I can and so there were plans drawn up a while ago. I haven't 
sat down and looked at them in detail myself, but um, we probably would want to use those barns for more studio space. Um, we, we don't have any, as in right now, we don't have any plans to renovate and go forward that are in the works. Actually, this is sort of a, a little bit of a surprise that um, this kind of popped up on our radar. And I think uh, Mr. Buck and Mrs. Buck just sort of said, listen, it's time, we wanna do this for you. Um, but having said that, more studio space does not necessarily mean we're bringing hundreds of people that have very large classes. I mean, these, are, these are small classes, these are relatively small classrooms. And, um, you know, there's, you know, I've never seen the parking lot full and, and we do have more room for parking as Mr. Buck uh, mentioned several times is that we do have, we do have more room for parking in there. Um, so long story short, uh, yes, we probably would want to put in a little more studio space. Will it increase the traffic a whole lot? Will it increase the need for more parking? I don't get that feeling. Um, can I say something? Probably say something. You have to call in? Yeah, Ms. Buck, go ahead. Oh, I'd just like to say something. The wonderful thing about the two big barns, the East Barn and the West Barn, is that they can be, um, the areas can be channeled into small, wonderful studios for sculptors, for pr private rental by artists themselves. It doesn't necessarily mean that everything is going to be a classroom with a ton of people going there. They will be <coughs> studios of private artists will help and they can get grants as well. If we want it to be an artistic community, we want it to be a school of excellence. And uh, it, can, it can also have some music training. It can be whatever we want it to be, but we want it to be the best and we want to serve the community and we especially want to serve our children and educate them in the finer arts. Thank you. All right, and Kevin, thanks for flagging earlier. Is there anybody else that I've missed? Again, my view is somewhat limited. Does anybody else need to be included for commentary? All right, in that case, Mr. and Mrs. Buck, I will uh, leave you with an opportunity for a last word before we move on to the next application. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, we'd just like to thank our neighbors for the input and the ideas and so on and, and for the support. Um, I, just, I just have a comment. Yeah. And concerns. Yeah, and they're concerned yeah. too, because they're concerned about the neighborhood too, yeah. as we are. Um, as far as parking goes, uh, Mark DiMaccia is right about that. And the academy could not expand without additional parking. And he knows the building code and all that. So we have a little extra space on our property that could be used for, for additional parking. But uh, there is definitely a, a, a limit and the building code would enforce that. So there's no way we can expand uh, classrooms and large assembly facilities without additional parking. Um, you have to have to meet the building codes. Have we not asked Mr. Baldwin any kind of occasion to use this parking lot? Yeah, okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, and thank you to all of uh, uh, the folks who gave input. I'm going thank to. You, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to move us to our second application as we continue the public hearing. Um, this will be application number six two three two dash two zero. <laughs> Variance from section 3.6.5 accessory buildings and structures to allow accessory building garage to be two feet from side lot line as against three feet minimum required as shown on plot plan. Residential zone B location 237 Brimfield Road and Charles again if I could go to you for the staff report. Charles are you ready with the staff report? Charles, you're muted, I believe. Yes, let me just unmute myself now, Mr. Chairman. So yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, so to give you a background to, to this um, application here, a call was received um, from the adjoining property, uh, the property to the rear of 237 Brimfield Road, and that's um, number 16 Clearfield Road. And they suggested to me that 237 Brimfield Road um, went and constructed a foundation for a garage in their rear yard uh, 
and that it has caused uh, their property to be flooded. I also received a telephone call from the owners of 237 Brimfield Road, and um, they had been in touch with the building department for a building permit for this, um, for this garage uh, after they had put the foundation in. And they were asked by the zoning official to seek uh, zoning um, advice uh, since um, it appeared um, it appeared to them to, to, to the uh, building official to be close to the prop to the fence. Well, usually a fence seen and a fence, the first thing you see your eyes tell you when you see a fence is that that's the property line. So he thought it was too close to the fence, and hence it probably is too close to the property line. So um, I uh, and they wanted me to to the applicants wanted me to come and take a look to, to see if um, the proposed garage would meet the sideline setback requirements. So my inspection revealed that the concrete foundation was in place for the garage and um, it appeared to be close to the side property fence as stated by the building official. Uh, the applicants told me then that um, there existed a garage several years ago before they purchased the property and that they purchased the property and moved in with that timber frame garage um, at approximately two feet from the western side boundary of the property. The applicant then told me that the rear property line setback is three feet. So it's just that um, two feet side yard that did not comply. Uh, so I explained to the applicant that the general rule for setback accessory buildings and structures is five feet. However, uh, section 3.6.5 makes an exception that residential lots having an average width of less than 65 feet may be located with, within three feet of the side and rear property lines. The subject property having a width of 60 feet would be entitled to this exception. That is, they would be entitled to have their um, accessory structures three feet from the property line. So I told the applicant that um, the timber frame garage that was in existence uh, may be deemed a legal non-conforming non use and may be repaired or um, reinforced structurally or it may be replaced in the exact location if for instance it was burned by a fire or there was um, some kind of natural occurrence that caused it to come down then they could put it back in the exact same um, location. So they, they told me though that the garage had deteriorated beyond repair and that the only way to make it suitable and safe was to tear it down and rebuild it after seeking the building permit. I told them that um, if it was brought to my attention at that time and I inspected it and got the input from the building official to make that um, judgment call um, I could make that determination and say, hey, um, between myself and the building official, we could say it cannot be um, repaired unless you, you um, change the foundation. Um, so I had, I had not seen the building before it was demolished and um, I would not be in a position to, to make that call. So at this point, the applicant inquired about his options and, uh, and, um, and asked if I uh, could let them go ahead with the building as they were unaware of the requirements of the regulations. I advised them that the only way they would be allowed to continue the building is if they obtained a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals. So um, the applicant had a legal, had a non-conforming building which um, according to they may have been in existence before the regulations changed. So um, before, they exist, the, before the regulations changed to require three feet from the property boundary, as the record, the record showed no prior variance 
was granted for this building. Hence, the owners would have been required to prove the legal nonconformity of the building before giving the approval to demolish and reconstruct them. By applying to the town for a certificate of nonconformity, uh, by proving from past records that the building was in existence legally before the laws changed, and that no has become a legal nonconforming building. So, um, in concluding, uh, the applicant has now applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance to allow the side yard setback of two feet as against three feet required by the regulations. This variance, if granted, will have a minimal impact on the existing community based on the fact that the building was already existing for several years and with no known adverse effect on the drainage of the property. The town engineer has also sent me his findings arising out of a site visit and he has stated that he saw no issues with past or current drainage problems associated with the garage. Yeah, all right. Oh, I, go ahead. I could have possibly, yeah, okay, that's it. That's it. Mr. All right, thank Chris. you. Thank you, Charles. Um, could we have the applicants unmute? And if you would uh, give us your name and address for the record. Hi, this is uh, Otera Mano, 237 Brimfield Road. Um, and my husband, Claudian Bajo. We, uh, Charles explained it very well. I mean, what, uh, I don't know, do you want us to give a version of the, or? It is, if, is there anything you want to add or do you want no, us to just ask any questions whole, we may have? The garage, I think, has been built since 1963 or 1964. 64. We purchased this property about 10 years ago. So the garage was there, but it was in pretty bad shape. I think our area in here in, in where we are, we have a lot of water problems, like as a neighborhood. So the foundation was cracked and everything. Um, and for the last two years, it was pretty much falling apart. So we had even contacted the insurance. They had seen it. That's and there's nothing we can do. It's a water thing. You know, the foundation had cracked and the whole um, garage had shifted. So after the last storm that we had in April, the wind, the whole garage shifted. So we decided to take it down and pretty much started rebuilding it at the same exact position until we... Oh, sorry, I don't know what's happening. Am I doing something or no? Okay. No, I think uh, Charles may be sharing something eventually here. Oh, okay. So Keep going. Then, yeah, no, yeah. So, and then pretty much we just started rebuilding until we realized that we needed a zoning because, um, I don't know, when it was built, maybe it was two feet instead of three feet. And, and Charles explained the rest, you know, how... Yeah. Okay, and yeah, you answered one of my questions in terms of when the... Uh, original structure was built and what you are proposing is exact same dimensions it's in the exact, exact same location same thing. we put the exact exact same thing exact yeah okay exact same spot everything is exactly the same okay and then charles back to what you had said um if this had been the result of a natural disaster or some other uh cause of the original structure coming down the okay. previous okay. nonconformity would have held. Right, and, and this on your screen here is a photograph of the uh, garage as it existed before. So that's the garage, that's the fence there, and that's the close, you can see the close proximity to the fence. Um, all right, and um, to the applicants, to the, uh, the neighbor who's on the immediate other side of the fence, have you had discussions with them? Did you talk to them about the application at all? I think, yes, we have talked to all of them. I think our neighbor in the back, we had initially started the complaint. It's because we all have a water issue and we had even applied with the town um, a couple, uh, about a year, a year ago. Yeah. We all signed a petition that we wanted the town to, you know, pretty much take care of the water, but now we're... I mean, oh, sorry about the mess. So uh, I just realized that. <laughs> so, 
So uh, I think he had complained about the water. It's not so, because the garage has always been there. It's not like it's blocking the view or anything. I think it was a water problem, but we also, I mean, this gave us an opportunity because if we're building this foundation, we are going to do drainage around the foundation. So that will take care at his property too. It will help. So, um, because that garage was so old, the foundation was cracked and all the water from their backyard was coming to the foundation of the garage. And that's why it deteriorated and it broke down. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. So okay. can you and pull up that first photo again? That you had okay so this that we're looking at is the existing foundation can you see that on your screen yes, so yes you'd, and like, I think... you'd like to see the original um garage yes okay sure Did you guys do anything to the pavement at all? Uh, I mean, the pavement? Turn, uh, well, we took out the, the, the previous foundation was basically just cracked and broken. So we took out that. I mean, it wasn't even a foundation. It was a slab. Well, the floor, yeah. Slab floor, yeah. So we had to raise the floor. We had to, yeah, take the whole. Because all the water, it goes towards the garage. So we had to raise the garage. Yep. And uh, bring the water to come the other way. It looks like the overall structure, though, grew based on the, the width of your driveway. Uh, well, the, like on the side? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like on the, you know, on this photo, your garage is barely it isn't past the edge of the existing driveway but in the other photo it looked like it was almost three or four feet past the driveway well probably they took it out or something or what when they did the foundation charles in your assessment did you confirm the dimensions which which dimensions mr chairman the uh, so it looks like Kevin, am I correct? Your question is whether the dimensions of the new structure are the same as the original. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't appear to be based on the the driveway, but we okay. haven't done any changes let on me, the driveway. I don't know if I'm, let me I'm let me, let me um, look at the foundation again. Okay, so. Um, So, Commissioner Tedesco, uh, you're, say, you're saying to us that the footprint is not necessarily the same? It doesn't appear to be. Okay, and, and that's, the, that's the mere fact why they are seeking a bearance, because if, if they were rebuilding the, the um, if they were maintaining the, the non-conforming use, the non-conformity, so to speak, then they would be required to build in the exact same location so because i don't know if they're in the exact same location or anything that is why they're applying for the variance so the variance will cover the fact that they're not building in the same location they're not maintaining the non-conformity okay okay so um i i have a Oh, go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Oh, no, that's fine. I was, uh, was going to move to that next to see if we had any comments either in favor I, or against. I have both a, um, a report from the engineer, from the town engineer, Derek D. Gregor, professional engineer. And I also have a letter from a joining property owner. And this is the same property owner that called um, to um, express concern about the, the drainage. And it reads as follows, uh, dated May 22nd, 2020, to whomever it may concern. I am writing in regards to the application for the project on the property at 237 Brimfield Road, Weathersfield. 
I have no problem with the people wanting to put up a garage. My concern is my backyard filling up with water when we have heavy rains or and days with a lot of rain and melting snow. You, on a, on a, on a day with a lot of rain or melting snow, you can swim in my yard in the summertime and ice skate in the winter. Yep. There is no way we can enjoy our backyard as it is either filled with water or too soggy. Uh, now they want to put up a garage. Not only is the water in the middle of our yard, but now it is on the, on the border. This seems to be on the border of our yard and theirs. It's, a, it's on the border of our yard and theirs. My concern is the water doesn't seep into the ground very fast and it will be a breeding ground for mosquitoes mm -hmm. as there is no drainage. I moved here in 2001 and I had and I had someone come out regarding the regarding the water problem then. So he's saying that um, since 2001, he has had someone come out to, um, to, to uh, look at the water problem. And that seems to me that um, that was when the existing, the original uh, timber frame garage was in place. And, um, and, uh, and, and well, Charles, I'm sorry, I missed in the beginning. Is this the neighbor to the left or immediately? This is the neighbor, this is the neighbor exactly um, behind um, the okay. property, Mr. Chairman. Um, and so on um, Clearfield? If, um, if you look at this um, next uh, feature on your screen, on your screen here, you see that house in the rear. That house in the rear, it's it's um, on 16 Clearfield Road. And um, the, the area that's flooded with water is where you see I'm moving my um, cursor right here behind these chairs, behind this foundation wall, this area right here. And when I went there and, and, and to take a look, it, it had rained recently and there was really some amount of water there, you know, so um, there was some amount of water. So it's, it's not a question of whether water is in their backyard whenever it rains. There is water in, in the backyard whenever it rains. And sometimes based on the slope of a property, water will settle somewhere on your property and um, some kind of drainage uh, thing has to be put in place to, to, um, to alleviate these kind of uh, problems. So from 2001, he has had someone come out, uh, take a look and nothing was done. I don't feel that in 19 years, anything has been done. I suppose nothing will get done. And this, this time either. It, so the problem according to the adjoining owner, has been with them for 19 years. Um, I have an email from the engineer and um, I will attempt to read that for you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and it says, I recently visited 237 Brimfield Road to inspect the new garage foundation that had been installed to replace the old one that was demolished and the installation of a drainage system in the rear yard that was underway. So what the, what the, what the engineer is saying is that um, the installation of a drainage system in the rear yard was underway. At the time of my visit, there was some standing water to the north of the foundation at the rear of 16 Clearfield Road. However, it was unclear if that was related to the new construction 
or if it was just because the surrounding area is very flat and clay layers are present near the surface that um, slow seepage in, in the soil would occur at that, at that particular uh, area. I spoke with the property owners who indicated um, that they thought their contractor planned to install an under drain behind the garage, which may help alleviate some of the standing water. I suggested that they also grade the area of their property towards the new yard drain that was to be installed to the east of the garage to encourage positive drainage. Other than that, I have no specific concerns related to the construction of the new garage. Signed, Derek D. Gregor, Professional Engineer, Town of Weathersfield Engineering Division, 505 Silas Dean Highway in Weathersfield. All right, thank you. If I could go back to the applicants on that last point. So you're planning to put in a yard drain as part of the project? Well, basically that's how the project started. We have been having water problems. So, and part of that, I mean, that's why the garage fell down because in general we had water problems like our backyard, you know, his backyard, our neighbor's backyard. We also did a petition with the town to take care of it. It's about 20 families that it's like an area that it has water problems. So we did the drainage and then we decided, you know, we started with the garage too. And Derek came, he's the town engineer for, he saw the drainage, he looked at all the area and we continued doing all the backyard and the back of the garage and the and sides. We put, so we put like a drainage system. Okay, thank you. Kevin, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask Charles, did, did the engineer, take any notice of, you know, I mean, if they're building a bigger structure, they're decreasing the permeable area that water could flow into. So in theory, they're, they're essentially perpetuating the problem. Um, is the drain gonna help mitigate that or? That's what the engineer says. He says that the drain would help to mitigate the problem. He. He did not mention anything about the size of the garage being an issue. He said he did not see any issue with the um, construction of this new garage as it relates to a drainage problem in, in the yard. Um, he stated that both properties had water settled in their um, rear yard when he visited. I'm sorry, can I, can I answer maybe, Kevin? Yeah, please. Yeah. Well, basically, it's not that we are taking our water and draining it on his backyard. This is rainwater we're talking about. And this rainwater used to come to our backyard, you know, and that, so this is not that his water is coming to ours or we're putting a water hose to this. This is rainwater that we can't necessarily be able to control where it goes. We have paid a lot of money to take care of our own backyard. They can do the same too, to, you know, to pretty much make it a little bit better. I mean, at, at that point is everybody's property. So I don't think that we, what we're doing is gonna affect, you know, his property. Cause he had had that problem. It's been a problem for 20 years. All right, Dan, you had a question? Yes, yeah, so where's the rainwater going to? Are you putting gutters on the garage? Is it going towards the drain? It, well, up till the, now. The drainage? The rainwater from the um, from the roof of the garage. Uh, we, it, we, it we goes to a dry well. We don't have it any. goes directly into the dry well. You don't have any gutters or downspouts in the garage, or that's not the plan. Downspouts? No. We haven't built it yet. We haven't built it yet. We haven't built it yet. Is it in the plans to put? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah, gutters, yeah. yes. And the downspouts of the water would go down the right. driveway. Yep. And where's the drain going to be in the backyard for the drainage system? In the backyard, yes. And where does that flow out to? Does it just disperse in the ground? Is yes. it like a flow well? Now, now it's in the backyard. It's a dry well. So it's a dry well. Okay. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right, Charles, can I come back to you? Do we have any? either 
um, feedback that you need to read into the record or anybody on the line you're aware of who wants to speak we, to this? We have no other um, public comment. I don't let me. All just, right, I can, I can ask me, generally then, is there anybody just, else? Let me just um, unmute these callers just to make sure that, um, because I'm not sure which caller is which. Um, I know some <laughs> some spoke before. I don't know if any of these numbers. Yeah, uh, and thank before. you everyone for your patience with us. So do we have anybody who's on the line who wishes to speak on this application? 237 Brimfield. Is there anybody who wants to speak either in favor or against? Okay, we had a pretty good crowd on the first one, so that might be the numbers you're seeing, Charles. Um, uh, all right, commissioners, any other questions related to this one? Okay, um, and applicants, any last comments you wanna give before we move forward? I wanna comment on the, uh, that Kevin said uh, about increasing the garage. Sure, go ahead. Okay, uh, if you look at the existing pictures, <coughs> Charles, are you able to pull those back up relatively easily? We just wanted to do a, let's have like a comparison again of the. Uh, when you say existing, you're talking about this foundation here? The existing one, no, the, the old one. The other one of the previous structure, Charles. Yeah, the previous. Oh, okay. You're talking about the timber frame garage. Okay, so let me see if I can get that a little larger for you. There it is. Can you make it a little larger? <laughs> okay, I'll try to do that. Um. Uh, if you see if you see the fence line my garage the old one it was right on the fence and uh, the soft head, that's a, it's on the neighbor's house neighbor side yeah. so if you look real close the fence is hitting it's hitting the garage on the plate yeah Okay. The the thing I was talking about is, is Charles on the right hand side. I wasn't it wasn't necessarily the left. So if you look at the right hand side in this, this picture, side, if you this guys side of, yeah, this if side you guys, of the garage? Yes. Oh what you wanted to stay about this side so of the garage? You can see that there's about maybe, I don't know, let's say a foot, foot and a half of pavement. That this that the garage doesn't go past. Right, because we moved so maybe, from maybe the fence. Because we moved it from the, the fence, fence a little bit. We moved it. We shifted. So it doesn't go. So we can. Yeah. So we can get further from the neighbor's fence as far as I can because I can't go too far because I won't be able to use the garage get out of the garage. Of the driveway, yeah. All right. So we're saying if I if I I don't want to. If I can interpret uh, what I'm hearing. Before so, there was no fence. It was like right on so the, the fence. Yeah. So the fence. Right, okay. So you've same dimension, but you've shifted a few feet. Into the right, right. Yes. So we can get a further from the fence. Further from the fence, but at the same time, be able to come in and out of the driveway, obviously. We don't want to shift it, you know, like. So if you zoom no, in this one, you'll see the difference when from the left, we went to the yeah, right. We left it from the fence about a foot or something. What is it? You see two my, you see my point? Now. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the foundation, when they poured it, they poured the foundation a little bit more to the right so we can be further from, from, the, the, line. from the line. Okay. All right, Kevin, any further question on that? I'm good. All right. Um, and, and to the applicants, one last time, anything else you want to add? No, we're good. All right. Thank you very much. And Charles, uh, just to clarify, we did cover all of the input that you had to read into the record. 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, that's the only uh, letter of concern that we got regarding three, okay, 237 Greenfield. All right, so at this point, if we could have a motion from one of the commissioners to close the public hearing and move into our public meeting. I move to close the public hearing. All right, Elizabeth, can we have a second? Second. Second. All right, so with that, we have closed out public hearing. We'll move into the public meeting. And just a reminder for all of you who are listening in, this is the opportunity where just the commissioners and the zoning enforcement officer will discuss. We uh, have no additional input that will come. So you're welcome to obviously stay with us so you hear what we say, but uh, please, if you would just mute your lines while we do this. And um, I'll begin with, if I get my, page back in front of me reading the first application now for the public meeting application number 6231-20 variance from section 5.2 permitted principal uses to allow business use in the residential district i.e. former accessory business use private arts academy to be permitted as a principal use arising out of proposed subdivision of lot known as 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue, which houses the academy in the accessory structure known as 431 Hartford Avenue, as shown on assessor's map submitted. Residential zone B, location 411 to 431 Hartford Avenue, applicant Douglas R. Buck. Um, before we move into discussion, Rita and Paul, we just need a determination as to which of you would uh, like to vote on this one as opposed to the second application. I don't mind voting on this one. I don't care. Okay. Um, well, Paul, I heard you first, so we'll let you vote on this one, and Rita, you'll vote on the second one if that works. Sure. Okay. All right. And everybody, all six of us are obviously encouraged and welcome to participate in the discussion when we move to vote. Uh, Rita, you'll just sit this one out. Um, does anybody want to offer opening comments on what we heard? I'll say something. I'm not going to vote, but. Um, you know, I understand some of the concerns about the um, zoning change that it could go to business, but I think it's really the fact that the word business is in there um, upset some people. Um, I think that it's going to stay residential zoned. I think the Planning and Zoning Commission certainly would not change um, a historic piece of property like this that had historic barns on it to a business zone. So I think that is probably not something that would happen, but I'm sure that as you write the, um, you can put something in there as a stipulation that would also help that in the future. That's it. Anybody else? I, I have a I have a comment. I was raising my hand, but uh, unfortunately, you didn't see me for that one. But I'm sorry, Paul. Um, uh, no, no, that's okay. I think um, also one of the other things I, I thought that needed to be uh, clarified for the community uh, state was um, the different um, the difference between the bucks owning the property and a 501c3 being the um, the art academy paying them rent and opposed to the art academy. Um, actually own in the property um, and um, the reason I, I fully understand it because I've worked with this um, I just think it could be it could get a little hairy for the community as far as you know um, what's going on and the reason why the term business needs to be used in uh, in the application and why this it's ref even though it's a school why it's referred to as a business so I um you know I, I just thought that that maybe needed to be cleared up a little bit, but um, you didn't see my hand, so that's that's um that's okay. No, and I appreciate that clarification. Now, apologies for uh, missing before. I was having trouble moving between the different views. So, um yeah, and I thought there was a good comment that came in on that, just in relate. You know, it is although a nonprofit, it is a business, and that they're bringing in income and they are paying out. Uh, expenses. It's just not designed. You know, the goal is not to have that margin be uh, the ultimate end game there. Um, let's turn uh, Dan, Kevin, Elizabeth, any comment 
from any of you? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm going to just, I'll give a, a quick overview from my perspective. I think um, this is, uh, I think we had great, great discussion, good input from the community on this and um, really productive discussion I felt in terms of clarifying some of the original concerns that several people raised. And um, yeah, we have a, um, a, a precedent of the 2005 variants that has some stipulations and um, seems if we can keep in um, the spirit uh, or even more to the point, the letter of those um, stipulations, we probably will, um, at least from my perspective, seems we'll address the concerns that were raised by the neighbors. Um, so with that, I'll ask if anybody wants to make a motion and um, if not, I will uh, try to formulate one. And Paul, I saw your hand, are you gonna move? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, if, uh, so I'd like to make a motion um, and pretty much mirror what was already in place for 2005 when they were granted that variance that all the, um, those stipulations stay in place um, with the property if we are going to approve this. Okay, so we have a motion to approve with the stipulations from the 2005 variance. Do we have a second on that? I'll second. All right, um, and I actually am going to, um, I, well, Charles, I have, I have a, a procedural question for you. Yes. Um, because we, as we talk through this, one of the pieces that's important to remember is that what we're discussing and voting on ultimately is the variance for the primary use of 431 if in fact the split of property occurs, but that's contingent on planning and zoning approving of that. Do we need to, from your perspective, add that as a stated stipulation or is that just a Abs matter absolutely. of fact? Yes, Mr. Chairman, you do need to add that. Okay, all right, so I um, kind of would like, to... go ahead, Kevin. I was gonna say, even uh, just going a little bit further, do, because the 2000, Five stipulations um, that that uh, would not allow them to renovate the West Barn. Correct. Correct. Okay. So I mean, going forward, would we want? Uh, well, it, would we I guess wanna... the, the, I'm sorry. The way it's written is the West Barn would not be used for the performing art studio. Okay, but it did sound like they, they were intending on uh, potentially using it for, um, you know, some, some space, uh, not necessarily like a mass gathering hall, but uh, in some fashion. So would we want to look at that as a, maybe an amendment to the 2005 stipulations? I, I think parking comes into consideration when you throw in the West Barn. I don't know if it meets the parking requirements. Yeah, that's why I, I, I think Dan, both of us were on the same page for kind of asking about that initially. Um, and then maybe that's something, maybe that's another stipulation that we're throwing in there that, um, you know, obviously they've, they've got to conform uh, with parking to go along with that. Okay, um, I'm going to make an attempt to um, amend our motion and um, see if, uh, if I, I think I can. Uh, Do you want yeah, to withdraw sorry, the motion a... and then we can make a new motion? Is that easier? Yeah, that, that's probably easier. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Paul wants to um, withdraw his motion. I'll withdraw my second, and we can make a new motion. Sure. I'll uh, I, I'll move to withdraw the motion. I'll withdraw my second. Okay. All right. Thanks. So we're going to start with a clean slate. I'm going to move that. I, I 
I move that the application be approved with the following stipulations that granting of the variance is contingent on the lot split being approved by planning and zoning that the intended use is as the art academy only all parking will be on property no off-site parking permitted and any renovation or use of the west barn must be pursuant to historic district parameters and also parking guidelines as set by planning and zoning and i'm going to add one additional stipulation that just clarifies any additional transfer of the property away from the art academy nullifies the variance and um this goes without saying but i think we should stipulate it nullifies the variance and the zoning remains residential i'll second could you repeat this number for mr chairman uh let's see i think i can get it yes um so i'm going to repeat them all just so everybody hears it again so um Stipulations that uh, the variance is contingent on the lot split being approved by planning and zoning. The intended use is as the art academy only. Number three would be all parking will be on property, no offsite parking permitted. Number four would be any renovation or changed use of the West Barn would be pursuant to historic district parameters and also parking guidelines as necessary from planning and zoning and number five was is that just a statement that any additional transfer of the property away from the art academy would nullify the variance and the property remains zoned residential I can, I can second it again. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take that as a sign that I got it uh, the same the second time as I did the first time. That's good. All right. Do we want to have any, uh, anybody have any additional comment or further discussion? Um, and Charles, I include you in that question. Any uh, commentary or advice? All right. And Charles, did you, get the five uh, stipulations. Charles, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I got okay. them, Mr. Chairman. Okay, great. Um, all right, so if there is, uh, Dan, did you want to weigh in? Nope, I'm good. I just took myself okay. off of mute. Gotcha. All right, well, then I guess we are ready to come to a vote uh, on the Approving the application uh, with the stipulation stated, it's been moved and seconded, so we'll come to vote. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the variance is passed as stipulated. And we will move to our second application, which is application number 6232-20 variance from section 3.6.5 accessory buildings and structures to allow accessory building garage to be two feet from side lot line as against three feet minimum required as shown on plot plan residential zone b location 237 Burnfield road applicant applicant Claudian Bajo. all right do we have any opening discussion on that one on that one Do we need a motion to approve to take it off? Uh, no, we can actually, and I, I had been off on this in previous meetings, we can actually discuss before okay. the motion. Yeah, thank you for that. I, that, that you caught me from a couple of meetings ago uh, that we had to do it the other way. Um, so I, I'll start. I mean, I think the, um, the concerns around um, drainage and, and standing water are um, 
very quite understandable and 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 those are real um i think the challenge i have weighing that out is that if the applicants were putting the structure three feet from the side we wouldn't be having this discussion and there would be no discussion around drainage and so we on top of that then we have um you know drainage uh, a dry well that is being put in as part of the project and um we had you know reporting from the town engineer that charles read in that um really didn't seem to indicate uh, and i and i put weight in that because i certainly am not an engineer by any stretch but uh, i put weight in that in terms of there not being uh, at least a significant adding to the problem with um being allowed to rebuild the structure so i'll pause there and let anybody else weigh in All right, um, and then this one, let's see, Rita, you were voting this one, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, do we have anybody who wants to make a motion on this application? I make a motion that we accept the application as written. I'll second. I'll second. All right, so we had uh, Rita, and then I heard Elizabeth first, and then we had another second in there also, so. Um, Charles, do you need any clarification or are we good? No, you're good. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have motion to approve as submitted and it's been seconded. So we'll come to a vote. All in favor. Aye. 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 And all, all opposed. All right. The variance is passed. Um, at this point, uh, I'd like to make a motion on the agenda. Um, so let me ask you a question, Charles. If we were to, well, actually, let me ask you this way. We might be able to do this quickly. So we have a quorum of folks who are here for the April meeting. Next up is approval of minutes from the April meeting. Did anyone have any, has everyone who was here had a chance to read through them? Mm -hmm. Okay, and did anybody have any corrections or changes that need to be made? No. Okay. Uh, in that case, can I get a motion to approve the April minutes? Motion to approve the April minutes. Second. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Rita. All right. All in favor of approving the minutes as submitted? Aye. 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 I'll abstain. All opposed? I, was in here. I abstain. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So we had, uh, so we had me, Rita, Kevin, and Dan voting on that. So that was uh, four. 402 abstain. All right, the, um, uh, at this point, we have an opportunity for anybody who is still on the line or any commissioners who wanted to raise any um, business that was not, uh, well, any other, any public comment, I should say, on zoning Board of Appeals matters. So I'll give a second for anybody who wants to unmute to give any additional feedback. Going once, going twice, all right. Um, <laughs> I would like to ask that we consider, given the hour, uh, tabling again our finalization of officers. Um, it, it is an important thing. I don't want to diminish it. I'm happy to stay if the group would like to do that. I just want to be sensitive to time as we move past 9 o'clock now on tonight's meeting. Well, I think Anybody? we should table. Uh, we still don't have all. It would be nice to have the rest of the, the folks here. Yeah, I agree. It'd be nice to have uh, Michael with us as well. And, and we have uh, Sandra now too. Yeah. So, all right, I'm going to, uh, I'd, I'd like to move that we uh, table formalization of officers to the June meeting. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. We will pick that up with the June meeting. And with that, uh, thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, IT support. And thank you to everyone, anyone who's uh, still out there from the community who uh, stuck with us all this time. Appreciate the patience with our virtual meeting and uh, lots of good productive discussion tonight. And thank you. Have a good evening and stay well. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Charles, you Bye. Can... Stay well. Charles, you could end the recording. I've already done so. It's still showing recording. You can end the recording. <laughs>